from New York. It's the show that's taking home leftovers <laughs> from on. the staff lunch. Come on. Come total on. rookie move. Hey, can, I, total can, I, rookie move. can we tell the audience what the staff lunch, though, is every well, year? Well, people might think we're biased the towards the Chiefs. Well, it wasn't Kansas City barbecue, sadly, but it was it still It was barbecue. delicious. Yeah. yeah. It, was it, was, it was good. Dinosaur barbecue. Yeah, shout out Dinosaur sure. Barbecue. We were going to get not Baltimore Yeah, we crabs. were going we we to pass it along to the citizens of the city, but one of our producers brought home giant <laughs> Tupperware. To How us. much Tupperware did you uh, bring, Dusty? Oh, don't say his name. All right, let's start the show. He said Dust. one giant container. <laughs> Come on, the guy's getting was married. He's got to save money. But we're starting with Banner Night. Uh, AFC Championship rematch. We are about five and a half hours away. Ravens in Arrowhead. Here's the career head-to-head -head between Lamar How's that and going? Patrick Mahomes. Not great. <laughs> Not great for Lamar, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Mahomes has the advantage. So, Brew, we will start with you. We worked long and hard on this question. Yeah. Who you got? Well, look, everybody knows I picked the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. But the Chiefs proved last year, Nick, you don't have to win your season opener oh, here to go. win the Super Bowl. <coughs> That's exactly right. And the Chiefs have every seeming advantage, like momentum-wise, tonight. The game is in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. It's banner night. You get tons of adrenaline from, you know, the, the banner being yeah, raised and, and all the celebration the of your Super Bowl. Yeah. They've had less turnover because you've highlighted the Ravens' turnover on the coaching staff and the roster. The Chiefs have had less turnover in both of those sure. areas. And on paper, the Chiefs are better than they were a year ago when they, of course, won the Super Bowl. So... What a wonderful win this is going to be for the Baltimore Ravens, baby. You see the tie? You didn't even have to ask a brother the question. This is who I'm going with, the Ravens. And here's why. Okay. First of all, in the, in the words of the late, great Jim Brown, they got to go get some get back. Ooh. They going to go get some get back. It has been sticking in their craw, gnawing at them all off season that they were the better team last year. Not taking nothing from the Chiefs, mm -hmm. but the Ravens were the better team last year. And while the Chiefs won fair and square, the Ravens can look at this and say, we beat ourselves. We beat ourselves. The Ravens had Nick. They had they had two unnecessary roughness penalties. They had eight penalties for 95 yards. Two unnecessary roughness. That's the definition of an unnecessary penalty. Two, one time they had too many men on the field. Mm -hmm. All right? Then two times they had roughing the pass, so you don't have to do that. And then, of course, Zay Flowers taunting. All right? And then, of course, in addition to losing their composure with all those 15-yard penalties, they lost their identity. All right, and they stopped running the football. Look at this graphic. In a lot of ways, they outplayed the Chiefs. They had more total yards. They almost averaged six yards per play, five yards per rush. Why not run the ball? Look at the Chiefs, less than three yards per rush. You see the penalties, though, penalties, yards, and giveaways via turnover. And that was the difference. So, Nick, I, all season, I know Lamar says it's not revenge, and that's a smart way to look at it. Don't make it too big. But this has been a all see, off season, and that's why they brought in Derrick Henry too for the Chiefs. So I got the Ravens tonight. Okay. First of all, let me say something because I was worried there <laughs> that you were gonna do the <laughs> ultimate hedge, which well, is I, my acting. Which is, your acting is, has is improved. You have a sag. The, the, I mean, yeah, the, I do. No, and an I, get, I get a, a, a royalty check. He gets check, a royalty so. check of at not least much, forty but. to fifty cents <laughs> every month. So, but you really did have me. Because it would be semi-reasonable to say, I think the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl, but I think Kansas yeah. City is going to win tonight. And it also would be the ultimate television hedge, which would be well, you get to come in tomorrow either right or happy. It's just tomorrow, like, I could, just like I, perfect, right now, yeah. right. could easily say, well, it doesn't... Yeah, sure, the Ravens win, just like the Lions did last year, just like the Bengals do or, or the Bills do in the regular season against the Chiefs. And it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, I am bound by my commitment to honesty and integrity on this show, and I must not give the easiest take. I must give the honest take. And I have the Chiefs huge. huge. I have the Chiefs. I'm not saying – let me be very clear. I'm not saying a blowout. What I am saying is the Chiefs' offense – 
most notably its passing offense and Patrick Mahomes is going to look as dominant as we have ever seen it. Wow. Because I know for some people, and I'm not naming names, but some <laughs> people, uh, uh, last year is the only year. For those people, Tua Tungavailoa is an Iron Man. And, they, and there are real, I mean, the, the, right, ex exactly right. There you go, bro. I don't know why you pointed the wrong way. Uh, and for those people, they think the Chiefs offense is maybe a question mark in week one. I try to, t as Wilds would say, open the aperture a yeah. bit wider and say, how have the Chiefs looked in week one since Patrick Mahomes got there? So let's quickly go through it. The second start of his career, the first start ever of when he was a full-time starter against the only other great quarterback in the division, four touchdowns, 250 yards, 127 rating. Then next year in week one, uh, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now that was pre-Trevor Jacksonville. Yeah. 40 points, three touchdowns, 380 yards, a 143 rating. The next year against Pete Deshaun Watson coming off the 24-0 lead the Texans had had. Yeah, kind of uh, similar. Three touchdowns, 200 yards, a 123 rating. The next year coming up against Peak Baker Mayfield after they beat them in the playoffs. Three touchdowns, 337 yards, a 131 rating. Then next year going up against Pete Kyler coming off Jeez. a playoff appearance. First <laughs> game without Tyreek Hill. That was the year, oh no, the Chiefs, the book is out on the Chiefs, put them in too high. No Tyreek, what are you going to do? He's going to drop a 40 piece on your head. And then of course there was last year, which one of these things is not like the, the other. Last year was a disaster. But that does mean over the course of his career, there has been what he has always done in week one, go 5-0, and oh, average 38 points in a 13-point victory, 18 touchdowns, no picks, a 137 rating, the greatest week one quarterback in NFL history, bar none, and then there's last year. And so I'm going to go with the bulk of history rather than last year. I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes being locked in. I'm going to go with George Karloftis, two-time Super Bowl champion in two seasons, first-round pick against a new Ravens offensive line, and Chris Jones and F Felix uh, Anaduke, the first-round, or Zuma Anaduke, pardon me, the first-rounder from last year, they didn't get much time. Those three guys having their names called on this broadcast a bit. I'm going to go with Baltimore once again being a little too hyped. I think too Baltimore hyped. will get another one of those silly penalties. No I think Baltimore way. will be, be frustrated. That's on Harbaugh, I think then. Baltimore, would, and this is why I said when the schedule came out that I thought this was unfair to Baltimore, that for a team that was that good, because Brew was right, they were over 22 weeks of last year clearly the best team. And then they had their worst game of the year at the worst time. To make that team in the next game they play, watch a banner drop that they all feel should have been theirs, I think is, uh, honest to God, unnecessary. Like that, give this, this would be a big game no matter what, mm. give it to them in week They're five, week team. 10, week 12, whatever. So even if they feel buttoned up getting off the plane, they will not come about 8.15 tonight. So I think Kansas City is going to score 30 plus, Oof. and I do not believe Baltimore can do that. So what do you think, like two touchdown I, wins? No, no, no. I th I think something along the lines of 31-24, 31-20, like something like that. Not a blowout, right, but the right, Chiefs' right. offense rolls, wow. which obviously in the second half of the playoff game it did. That's what I think we're going to get. I got you, the Chiefs. you know, I got the Chiefs. I, well, I, I don't, mean, I don't, I don't know, know who you. I, I still don't even know who you picked to win the he Super Bowl. He picked. I picked, yes, San Francisco. I picked San Francisco over the Dolphins. Yeah. But if Patrick Mahomes shows up, <laughs> <laughs> the three P. Yeah. Ooh, Jordan S. People say he's Jordan S. Right. Um, all right, let's talk about the Ravens side of things. Washington Post's Kent Bob wrote a long feature on Lamar Jackson. It's excellent. It pretty much covers childhood to now. Uh, late in the article, Lamar talks about the AFC Championship game. It's a quote he gave Bob in June. Bab. Bab, excuse me. Uh, how I'm feeling right now, I wish I was feeling like this body-wise in the AFC Championship. We would have won the game. I would have been able to move around for my guys with me just hurting and can't move. I know if my legs were good, we would have won that blank. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have even had to throw the ball blank throwing the ball. Okay, Nick, your reaction here. All right, I'm not going to kill Lamar for the we would have won. 
It, it, it's a first cousin of the turf, the refs, <laughs> the... But I'm not going to kill him for okay. that. The end of that quote cannot be said out loud by a franchise quarterback. F throwing the ball. We wouldn't have had to throw the ball. F throwing the ball. In that case, tell John to call his brother, say they'd like Greg Roman back. In that case, why have you spent more draft capital than any team in the league on wide receivers since Lamar's been there? In that case, why was the story of last season Lamar the pocket passer? But are you saying, I, but are you interpreting this as Lamar overall talking about his philosophy I, towards throwing the ball or just that specific game? The Chiefs I, couldn't stop the run. We wouldn't I, even have had Here's how I'm interpreting it. Any starting quarterback in the league that says to a reporter doing a profile on them, F throwing the football, you would have a moment of pause. If the only, if you would have given me a blind quote that this was from guess the quarterback, I would have said, well, it has to be Daniel Jones, and I guess he's right. <laughs> That's what I would have said. Like, and I, I cannot believe Lamar said this, and if I were a Ravens fan, it would be concerning because maybe we can say, maybe, you can say, you can convince yourself last year in that playoff game, if they'd have run more, they would have won the game. I think the reality is last year and all their other playoff losses since Lamar's been there, if he had thrown the ball better, they could have or would have won those games. Mm -hmm. I don't. Maybe last year they should have run it more, but the real long thread story for the Ravens being here in the regular season and here in the playoffs is the passing game goes to die come the postseason. And so I think this is a wild quote to give to, to a reporter who's been living with you, basically spending a lot of time with you. And in whether he should have said it or not, I don't think he was lying to himself. I think it's how he feels. And that does not give me confidence if I'm a Ravens fan that this year is going to be different. Hmm. I, I think you're making too much out of the quote, but I will say this. That, as a guy that was a magazine writer, where you spent a lot of time with an athlete, that, and I, I'm not saying it was, because I'm not going to disparage the writer, that sounds like an off-the-record quote. Well, <laughs> that sounds like something, you know, you get comfortable with a guy and you just start talking to him like a friend and like you would say to anybody behind closed doors. Because for a quarterback to say that, it sounds crazy. You now, agree. I mean, it's just, like I said, it sounds like an off-the-record quote. Obviously, he's going to throw the football, and he wants to throw the football. But the quote is what it is. I got to be honest, though, Nick. I love it. Wow. I do love it. And I could have went misdirection, but I'm just being serious. I love Thanks this. Not. because Twice in one second is <laughs> too much. Our heads would be spinning. Yeah. One, it exudes confidence. And I'm not just talking. I'm not talking. I'm talking about the whole quote uh, now. Yes, about if about I were right, we win. Right. Like, he didn't put it on, you know, he didn't bow at the throne of Mahomes. It's... Man, look, this dude, nobody's been able to beat him. I mean, we're going to try and we're we going to beat him one day, but the dude is too good. Like, none of that, all right? It was, it was on me. That's if true. I play my game, we beat them. So I love that part. Secondly, it shows a commitment to the run. And I do think he's denied it. I think most of us feel like Lamar has spent the last few seasons trying to prove yes. I'm a pocket passer. And obviously, he's going to throw the football. But I think and he's now gotten better it, as a pocket. Right, person. absolutely. And if his mentality now is, yeah, I'll throw it. Of course, I'm a quarterback. I'm going to throw the football. And we got some good receivers and tight ends. But I'm not shying away from the run anymore. I'm not worried about the critics saying, oh, he can't. He's just a runner. You can't win that way. He's defied conventional wisdom his entire career. So I like that commitment to the run, just being who he is. And then third, a little selfishly, this just verifies what I was saying all offseason about his weight loss. He said, he, he said that he, in that article, he wants to lose weight so he can get away from guys. Um, all right, Chiefs reloaded their weapons uh, in what we think was an attempt to get back uh, to a Showtime offense. Last year, they averaged less than 22 points, the lowest of the Mahomes era and stymied the Ravens uh, to get the W. 
points, but they did only score 17 points against the Ravens. So does Kansas City need to return to an explosive offense to three-peat? Can I quote Jack Nicholson from The Departed? Uh, sure, if it's uh, safe for work. Yeah, it is. Um, he said, I haven't needed money since I took Archie's milk money in the third grade, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to return to the explosive offense, but they like it. They want to. Then this is a difference between Patrick and Lamar. Pat, Lamar's saying, F throwing the ball. Patrick's saying, man, can we have some more ring around the rosy passes? Yeah. <laughs> Has Taylor drawn one up? What about behind the back? What about getting back to what Broussard was talking about, them not, quote, wasting Mahomes' prime and a laser show? So do they need to? No. They have. They won a Super Bowl in 2019, deep bombing you to death. They won a Super Bowl in 2021, scoring more than anyone, three to five yards at a time. They won a Super Bowl in 2022 with a great defense and a quarterback that just understood time score situation better than anyone. So they can win it a million different ways. I think they're going to try to play some of the hits again this year and go back to, you can beat us. You better be ready to score 35 points. And so that's what I think is going to happen. And so do I think they need to? No. Do I think they will? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. I'm going to give it to you. Perfect quote from Jack Nicholson. Oh, thank you. Nicholas. I left out Nicholson. of some in the middle that was a little <laughs> inappropriate for the show. But it is a good quote. No, no I, it's true. Look, after what happened last year, you just can never count them out. Unless they just don't make the playoffs. Like, you can't count them out during Mahomes' prime. Because they had no business, like looking at that regular season, what they they lost five of eight or yeah. something like and that. Yeah, and it one was point? one of five the hardest of playoff paths ever by opponent record and opponent success in the regular season. The receiving core, I don't, I think was bad, and they still won the Super Bowl. So no, Nick's right; they don't have to get back to that. But I selfishly, even though I'm not picking them to win the Super Bowl, I want to see it. I just don't like seeing a guy this talented not be able to use his full arsenal. And now, look, with two burners in, in Hollywood and uh, Xavier Worthy, they yeah. should get back to being what they were. Devil's advocate. Sure. If I was the Ravens, Mahomes has made it very clear that he wants to have fun and air it out, and I think you laid it out perfectly. The, Andy Reid wants to do it too. I wonder if they have the discipline to put that in the back pocket and get to be like, you know what? Unfortunately, we got to win this game like Floyd Mayweather. Here, come in and just dodge, dodge, oh, one punch, win around, and just win this one 17 to 10 again. Well, Obviously, he wants to win, but it really feels like this year he's like, you know, I did that all last year. No, I want to kind of. So, but here's, so here's why I, I, so this is why I think the 2021 season is so important. I'm sorry, the 2022 season is the year they won their second Super Bowl. Uh, it's so important that the first year without Tyreek. That year, it was all underneath. I think it was 27 touchdown passes to tight ends or running backs. Yeah. It was the a lot of the the Mahomes air yards numbers were, that yeah. were lower from that season. Mm -hmm. They led the league in points. They scored 44 in their opener. They can be a late, uh, not quite a laser show, but a prolific offense. Doing like that. It, like an avalanche. Exactly. And so that where the difference that I think is going to be because of Xavier and uh, Hollywood's not there tonight, I just think the middle of the field, the short intermediate middle for Kelsey and Rasheed Rice is going to be so open that they can score a bunch of points even if they're not getting 30-yard gains. And yep. so that's – so I agree. If Baltimore could hold them to 17, that would be a great game plan no matter that what. Be, that would be a worst-case scenario. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.